uh, neutrons are evaporated in the process uh, in these reactions in preference to uh, preferably to protons uh, because the evaporation of neutrons as we discussed in previous reactions uh, there in uh, these reactions so neutrons were evaporated and in, in, in rare reactions evaporation of proton was absorbed it means the evaporation of neutron is preferable process as compared to evaporation of proton so whenever a nucleus undergoes evaporation of neutrons so what will happen now let us go back to the neutron to proton ratio that how a nucleus establishes the stable neutron to proton ratio during the nuclear phenomena now whenever neutrons are evaporated so what happens it leaves the system a nuclear nucleus is neutron deficient and this deficiency has to be met or has to be uh, 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 what we can say to be fulfilled by any process which we have already discussed for production of neutron or for uh, disappearance of proton in the nucleus uh, and this stability uh, this this uh, ratio where the the ratio uh, uh, the the disturbed ratio being produced by evaporation of neutron uh, now this is below the stability it means the nucleus is still not uh, not stable it will undergo further radioactivity and let's see how the nucleus adjust or readjust itself the nucleus is now unable to uh, this is unstable to positron transmission or electron capture now what positron emission is and what electron capture is so positron emission you know uh, if you go back to your previous lectures that what positron emission uh, how positron emission will change the atomic mass or atomic number of a nucleus and what electron capture will do so when you want electron capture this is similar to pair pair annihilation uh, and positron emission will change the atomic number also uh, by one or uh, if the process are successively uh, more than the atomic number will change further so another possibility uh, besides positron emission and electron capture is uh, neutron capture so whenever neutron is captured so it will increase or it will readjust the neutron to proton ratio which is below the stability level so in fissionable reactions and non-fissionable reactions de-excitation normally occur by neutron capture and if you remember so in most of the nuclear reactions or in nuclear reactors if you take some examples uh, for example example of uranium so uranium was bombarded by slow moving or thermal neutron and that thermal neutron was capable to, to initiate certain nuclear reactions in uranium uh, target nuclei so not normally this neutron capture is the preferable process uh, and whenever a neutron is captured so uh, this neutron will have certain kinetic energy and this kinetic energy will increase the, the excitation energy of the ground the nuclei uh, beyond the ground level or uh, the stable level so whenever this neutron is captured so that excess of energy being provided by this neutron has to be emitted in the form of gamma radiation or gamma emission by the nuclei now this thermal neutron capture it provides as we discuss uh, this extra energy uh, and this extra energy is actually over and above the binding energy of a neutron so whenever this is over and above the binding energy of a neutron so another neutron evaporation is now expected uh, the evaporation of neutron or neutrons is now expected uh, and it is possible that this energy is accommodated by one neutron which gets evaporated so if the energy is uh, the energy of this thermal neutron is uh, accommodated by a single neutron inside the nucleus so that single neutron will get evaporated and if the thermal energy is distributed among more neutrons and if the distributed energy is now over and above the binding energy of the neutron uh, it means if the thermal energy of the, the kinetic energy of this neutron is more then more than two neutrons are also expected to be operating the process 
along with the, uh, the emission of gamma radiation uh, from the nucleus. And this evaporation is least likely, but the gamma ray emission is the most likely. Why this, this cooperation is least likely? Because the nucleus will still remain neutron deficient if thermal neutron is captured and thermal neutron is absorbed by the nucleus while another nuclear nu neutron is evaporated. So there will be no net change in the nucleus and again the instability will remain the same. Therefore, this is not the favorable process or the favorable steps or the favorable things taken by the uh, nucleus. But the uh, if gamma ray emission is the most favorable process where no change in uh, atomic number or atomic mass will occur by emission of gamma rays, uh, whatever the number of these emitted radiation is. So, uh, next, if kinetic energy is several mega electron volts, then neutrons are evaporated prior to gamma ray uh, emission. This is again uh, dependent on the uh, amount of energy being provided to the bombarded particle. Uh, and from the excited uh, nucleus, uh, more than one neutron can be uh, evaporated. It means if we bombard one neutron but with considerable kinetic energy and several mega electron volts, so more neutrons are expected to, uh, to be evaporated from the nuclei, which will uh, create further problems of neutron deficiency uh, in, to the nuclei. Now, nuclear reactors, uh, they are normally sources of the neutron emissions and capture and reaction involving neutron capture and neutron emission, they are generally occur, occurring in, in, inside the reactor uh, because these reactions in ordinary land with open air, they are not possible to be carried out. So, we have to carry out these uh, reactions inside the nuclear reactors. Now, by neutron capture, the nucleus become now neutron rich uh, and with higher neutron to proton ratio. So whenever the neutron to proton ratio becomes higher and this higher doesn't mean that we have to uh, keep the neutron to proton ratio higher rather we have to keep it within the limit of stability. Uh, so whenever this limit of stability is reached or uh, the ratio is sufficiently higher uh, up to yeah, if the orbit, uh, it is, if it is uh, very close to the optimum value of neutron to proton ratio. So then it undergoes beta decay and what beta decay has to, to uh, carry out, what change beta decay has to carry out in the nuclei. For example, this is a metal with atomic number Z and atomic mass A. Neutron has been bombarded or neutron has been captured by the nuclei with the emission of gamma radiation where another metal of M A plus 1 and Z has been produced. Now this metal and why it is A plus 1, so neutron has been captured by this nuclei uh, and uh, the atomic, uh, atomic mass of this nuclei is supposed to increase or to enhance by one unit. So this is that uh, daughter nuclei are relatively heavier in mass. So whenever this, uh, this particle or this nuclei is produced, now this nuclei our data nuclei has elevated neutron to proton ratio because number of neutrons became more uh, as compared to its parent nuclei. So the number of neutron has to be adjusted towards stability in order to gain uh, the specific stability. So beta radiation will be emitted. Uh, this is the beta radiation as we have discussed. There are two types. One is with negative charge and the other one is with positive charge. So that one is called positron emission. And in this case, the reaction will undergo negatron emission. And this negatron has zero mass, but it has uh, atomic number minus one. So minus one uh, and Z plus one will equal to Z. So this nuclei, which will be obtained, uh, which is obtained as a result of negatron emission, will be uh, higher mass number and uh, mass, mass number and uh, atomic mass as compared to the parent nuclei which is this one. Now if uh, we are carrying out these uh, reactions, so for these reactions relatively long time of air radiation is required uh, because we may use the source of neutron for a relatively long time so that 
the new Chrome gets entered into the new 